how many plays that certain tracks have. I still I still can't believe it. I, I don't yeah. understand it, but it's awesome to see that kind of uh, support. Yeah. Well, then may, let, let, let's get a, a bit into that. I don't want to mm -hmm. like reopen old old wounds and and all of no, that. It's, but uh, uh, it, it's it's still a very like relevant debate i think is yeah uh, it's uh, it, this is never going away like sampling <laughs> i think it's going to stay forever so yeah uh yeah as much as you want to dive into it what, what was kind of your mindset two years ago when you decided to yeah take a step back um so i know i, I dropped that video um on my youtube channel and explained as much as i did and i'll i can reiterate and get more into detail um, there was a lot going on in my personal life as well, um, whether it was my relationship that I was in at the time or my job that could have also been clouding my judgment. Um, but mainly, yeah, so there was, there was the, the, um, the, the, the sampling, right? I couldn't think of the word. Um, <laughs> there was the sampling that I was doing that I guess seemed rather controversial. Um, I, and to this date, I still, I, I don't understand the, the, the rules, uh, but it was, you know, me sampling current day music, we'll say from like 2014 and so on, sampling mm -hmm. from those tunes, whether it was snares, breaks, even, even down to kicks, anything that I thought sounded nice that I could implement into my music, I would do it. Um, not not seeking any sort of beef with any producers or anything like that my my goal was to like i said make music that i thought sounded good um and so i can i can understand and i can respect that a lot of producers make a lot of their sounds from scratch um but a lot of them don't i, I yeah. don't know that seems like a cop-out answer but uh in my head, it was it wasn't something like I'm gonna go and rip somebody's break and I'm just gonna throw it into my tune blatantly. Mm. I would never use somebody's if I did use you know sample somebody's song or like elements from their song. I would never just throw it into my track unprocessed and you know just use yeah. that as is. I would always do some sort of tweaking or processing to it. And 99% of the time, I won't even say that. 100% of the time, if I used someone else's samples, it was in a layering process. Yeah, yeah. So I never ripped somebody's break and just threw it into, oh, that's like my drum break now. Like I yeah, never yeah, yeah. I never did that. Because even in my head, like that seems immoral. That yeah. seems wrong. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, which, and I guess I, I can see other people's like mindsets if somebody has spent hours, you know, putting a break together or layering a bunch of snares to get a, a final sample. I can get how that's like stealing someone's work. Um, but at the same time, I thought that that was sort of the premise in drum and bass. I thought it was all based around sampling. And, mm -hmm. and I apologize for my ignorance. Um, <laughs> I was so ignorant to the whole drum and bass scene and even EDM as a, as a genre, if, if you want to refer to it, is that um, when, I, when I first got into it, I, I, when I started making drum and bass, I was a hip hop producer, just making beats and selling yeah. beats online. And uh, a buddy of mine, good friend, uh, like a brother at this point, um, he, he goes by Horizon High. Um, he, he showed me like all of these different genres in EDM and I sort of gravitated towards drum and bass and, uh, and a couple other genres. Um, and at first I was like really, really, really like strict in the way I produced. It was like, I'm not using drum breaks. I'm not using anything. I'm going to build all of my breaks from scratch. And <laughs> with that came, I guess, a, a, a sort of very experimental sound, but a lot of like really shitty too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, obviously like when you're new to production, you know, you're not going to be making like grade A tunes in your yeah. first year. It's just not going to happen. But um, I feel like the lack of good sample usage really affected my overall sound and my overall quality of sound. A lot goes into it, you know, mixing and, and, and things like that. But I think having the right sample selection is huge. I think it's major. Yeah. Um, and so at, at some point I abandoned that mindset. I don't know if it was because, um, Horizon High, his name is Ruben. I'm going to call him Ruben. Um, I don't know if it was Ruben constantly getting on my case, like, 
you need to you need to use breaks yeah. I mean, he wasn't it wasn't like roasting me or, or insulting my sound but it's just it, it's important to like really fill out your especially when you're new to just to really fill out your drums to make it make it sound like a fuller sound um and so that's I, I sort of just kept with that mindset it's like i i need to i need to have a really good sounding break really full sounding break so um why am i going to stop my sampling at the year like 2000 it, it just mm -hmm. it i wanted to make sounds that were current so i felt like my best opportunity was to sample current music um mm -hmm. and so <laughs> long a long journey to get to this point i guess um uh i was i i was a part of a bunch of different uh communities a couple years ago um on on twitch and on discord and i would share my music to get feedback and it you know i guess you could say that i sort of sold myself out when i was asked about certain elements and i i said yeah i mean i, I sample it from this person or this tune or whatever and people uh people shared their thoughts as people hmm. do you know yeah. and whether it was the fact that I just wanted to make cool sounding music and share it with as many people as I could and I just took it personally or the fact that I was going through a lot of my own personal life, um, I received it in a way in which it was kind of like, fuck this, like yeah. I don't need to be a part of this. You know, I, I get that and, and I mentioned in my video, I get that there's a lot of people that supported my music and there's a lot of cool people in the scene and the industry. And, and I, I still believe that. Um, but at that point in time, I didn't see, I didn't see any of that. I just saw like all of this mm -hmm. criticism, all of the, all of the harsh comments. And, um, there were the experiences that I had with, with various labels and, and failed releases and, uh, plans changing and everything. It was just like, dude, this, this industry, it's it fucking sucks. It sucks man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, there's there's parts of it that do and parts of it that don't and um and that led to that led to sort of the decision it's like you know what my whole mindset on this was to just make and share music that i loved and and i felt like i was being attacked you know it, mm -hmm. it, maybe like i said I, I could have had a completely wrong mindset dealing with that situation um but i'm older now and, and my mindset is different and at this point it's kind of like uh I'm still not really in it for clout or fame or anything like that, but I do feel like that, that sense of like, I, I need to repay all those people that messaged me for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Hey man, I really, your music helped me through this experience in my life, helped me with these really hard times. It's like, that's, that's the reason that I got into it to begin with. That's why I did it. So it, it kind of just, kind of just put me back on, on track. It's like, you know what, if, if people really liked my music that much, I, I feel like I owe it to them to, yeah. to continue making it. And so I started experimenting with drum and bass again, six months ago, eight <coughs> months ago, um, me and Ruben or horizon high, we, we sort of, <laughs> he, he pressured me a lot into it. Um, and he'll hear this, but it, it, it's kind of his fault. It's kind of his fault that I'm in drum and bass anyway to begin with, but it's kind of his fault that we ended up launching a secret alias, um, which is now going to be public. It's called Phoenix and Caldera. Um, it was sort of like a secret partnership to, I guess, sort of ease me back into making drum and bass again mm -hmm. and um, never really planned on um, making that public. Uh, it was just sort of like my opportunity to start making drum and bass again and release and see how people like the music and it kind of uh we got we got a couple releases out and uh after a lot of conversation with him it was like maybe maybe i should just bring back alexander um mm. and that's sort of that's sort of where we're at now um mm. so i guess the official statement <laughs> yes alexander <laughs> is back um there are releases in works right now um probably in the next couple of months uh we'll be hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be hearing some some fresh alexander tunes that's so, brilliant man yeah i need um, some water i mean definitely uh on that uh youtube video where you <clears throat> announced you were leaving there were a ton of messages underneath from people saying that they were influenced by you and uh mm -hmm. got into drum and bass because of you and stuff like that i know you mentioned lenas before we were we started recording yeah and 
yeah yeah the video itself um it, okay <laughs> this it's like a really humbling thing to say but i didn't think that i was anybody you mm. know um obviously i knew a, a good amount of people liked my music but I didn't really realize the scale of, you know, how much people uh, like had listened to Alexander tunes, if that makes sense. It, yeah. it was sort of staggering to see all of those messages and even from artists that inspire me and my sound back in the, in the day, like one of my biggest inspirations, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to name drop or, or anything like that, but I, I was a huge fan and, and still am of, uh, I don't know, is that? I don't want to. Th I don't want to like throw anybody under the bus, though. Like yeah, I sure. Yeah, uh, as Hold you on, Bryson. Okay, fuck it. It's it yeah. is what it is. But huge, huge uh, fan, and like I said, they really inspired my sound. Yeah. Um. I I, I just I just loved pulling Bryson tunes, and I tried to tried to get uh, releases on Solvent. Um. I managed to do that a couple times. Um. But just to to see like people that sort of pioneered my sound and my like my my envision when it came to making drum and bass to comment and and leave the words that they did mm. um it was it was just it was really unsettling because like i said i i didn't think i was anybody yeah. i still don't um and then months later seeing <laughs> probably my biggest inspiration in my sound etherwood's been alexander tunes it was just i couldn't uh. believe it like i really couldn't believe it and at that point it was already like this is the decision that i've made like you can't just say, uh, on second thought, yeah, mm, I'm actually gonna come back, you know, and and so to, to see that uh, I have that kind of support that people really liked the tunes, and just in the past couple months, logging back onto my SoundCloud and seeing how many plays that certain tracks have, I still I still can't believe it. I, I don't yeah. understand it, but it's awesome to see that kind of uh, support and the fact that I had put that community together on uh, Twitch when I was streaming all the music production and everything and uh, artists like Lenny's uh, perspective shift, uh, ethereal riff. There's so many, so many amazing talented producers that I was able to inspire or maybe help with my techniques or anything yeah. like that. It's, it's so humbling to see that. And um, to see that at this point after accidentally revealing a picture <laughs> that i still have that much support it's yeah. you know and the monthly emails from spotify that i have all the, all of these listeners it's it's amazing and i still don't yeah. it's like i said I, I i try to be as humble as possible um i i just really didn't think that i was hmm. i was shit. i didn't think i was anybody <laughs> so